Hello there kitties, I'm Carrie, the vacuum tube witch, and I've got uh, some interesting stuff going on here in my workshop because uh, yesterday I did a little project uh, of uh, reverse engineering and uh, recapacitulating the DJ mixer that I have here. This will be the preamp for my tertiary audio setup in the lab because uh, I, um, I've i got uh, three pairs of uh, speaker systems. One of them is my uh, main hi-fi setup that uh, I use for listening to music and uh, that runs connected to my uh, EL84 WS1 uh, amplifier that I built in uh, 2013. The other setup is um, placed at the at the desk where I've got my uh, computer, and uh, when I'm uh, not uh, listening to to vinyl records or cassettes, I I use that one. And the third setup is uh, is right here above my bench because uh, I found a pair of uh, LG speakers. So I got an idea to hang them right above the bench. And uh, I also had a old uh, transistor power amplifier that uh, at some point it was uh, my main amp in the late uh, 2000s. So I decided to, to tweak it uh, a little bit to uh, recapacitate the power amplifier modules and uh, change the output switching relay because uh, the old one was pretty dirty and uh, unreliable and uh, I also wanted to reactivate this uh, old uh, DJ mixer and um, take a closer look at how it uh, how it operates I had a little problem with it because um, it didn't have too much gain I tracked the problem Reverse engineered the whole thing and uh, the block diagram you've got here it uh, basically has a microphone preamp, it has a uh, phono preamp and it's got uh, a few line inputs here and uh, those are the faders, so there's a cross fader here for the main inputs and the auxiliary inputs are here and uh, this was actually where the problem was because uh, I had the switch in the talkover position and it turns out that it attenuates the output signal quite significantly as you can see here it's a voltage divider of uh, 27k to 12k that would drop the signal by 10 decibels and that's uh, quite a lot and uh, in the process of uh, modifying this mixer I did a complete reverse engineer and uh, Reverse engineered the tone controls, reverse engineered the summing circuit. Also, where did I have it? Reverse engineered the phono preamp, the mic preamp, and uh, the meter circuit and the monitoring ampl amplifier. It all runs on uh, operational amplifiers other than the MIG preamp that has a single transistor. I don't know why they did it that way because uh, I would use the low noise operational amplifier for that. But hey. Okay, so 
the video of that uh, reverse engineer and uh, recapacitulation job uh, is uh, coming up. I've got a few old electrolytic capacitors here. And that's uh, that's not all of them, but I replaced uh, all of them. And they will end up in a test chamber. The idea for this test chamber was uh, the first uh, the first time I got the idea for this test chamber was uh, this Saturday during the live stream the bigclive.com channel uh, live stream uh, Clive does uh, his streams at uh, something like 10 p.m. Uh, UTC plus 2 now, that would be the Central European time, because uh, I'm in Poland and uh, we use the Central European time, but uh, I think I will prefer to use uh, UTC because, uh, as the name says, it's universal. Anyway, this test chamber is... Uh, Pretty good for testing the magic smoke capability of uh, electronic components. And uh, here I can connect the power. There is a switch for actually testing the component. Wait for the same to flip the switch of death. Yeah, that would be it. And uh, there are alligator clips here that uh, I can uh, connect uh, the device under test. And after this is connected, the whole assembly goes back to the test chamber. And here is where the magic and here is where the magic smoke uh, usually <laughs> happens. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, so I'll give it a thorough test pretty soon. And uh, from uh, from other stuff, I uh, I was thinking today because um, there is a Polish uh, electronic engineering channel named uh, Reductor Szumu, that would be noise suppressor in English, and he posted a video about uh, some, uh, some uh, tech tips on repairing a certain uh, Technic simplifier that has a pretty nice uh, feature that uh, changes the bias voltage or current, to be more precise, uh, of the output transistors when the uh, amplifier doesn't get uh, the signal. So uh, it would be a power saving feature and uh, I was thinking about uh, doing a thing like this on a tube amplifier. Got a very rough sketch of uh, how something like this could look like. Like we've got uh, the signal input here and uh, this would be your typical single-ended uh, tube amplifier. Be it uh, EL84 or, or 300B or whatnot. Basically, a um, class A output stage that uh, requires power all the time. And uh, this circuit, uh, this would be an uh, amplifier and a rectifier for controlling the. And this would also be a. Fast attack, slow release uh, circuit uh, for controlling the bias voltage 
and it would work in such a way that uh, with no signal present here the switch would be open and that uh, would put a high negative voltage uh, to the grid of the output tube reducing the plate current um, to a minimum value preventing the tube from uh, using power when, uh, when uh, the audio signal is absent and uh, while uh, it wouldn't be as effective for small tubes like uh, EL84 or, or something like this it might be pretty useful if you use an uh, 6S33S of course, uh, now with the war in Ukraine and uh, and the lockdown on the Russian economy, getting those tubes could be quite problematic. But still, uh, it might be worth considering uh, doing something like this, but uh, got some consideration here. How does it impact the sound? Uh, adding the control element here I was thinking about a MOSFET transistor I was thinking about an uh, analog switch I was thinking about the relay and uh, adding the side chain here how would it uh, also affect the audio signal then there would be the energy consumption consideration for the control circuit and uh, then there would be the cost versus benefits consideration because uh, with uh, small tubes it might not uh, really provide any savings because uh, you have to keep the tube glowing, you have to heat it up uh, all the time because you can't just uh, switch the heater on and off uh, rapidly it has to stay on and, uh, and this is a matter of calculating how much the power goes into the plate circuit versus how much uh, power goes into the heater circuit and uh, what actual savings can you get from uh, limiting the plate current so I might be experimenting with, uh, with this uh, little idea that I got today maybe Introducing some innovation to the vacuum tube amplifier world. <laughs> you can, uh, you can always uh, think that uh, everything has been said in the vacuum tube amplifier world, but <laughs> but if you can uh, reduce the the power and uh, reduce the load uh, on the tube. It might help you because uh, now with the war the supply of tubes is gonna be way down and you have to save them if you can. Of course uh, I've heard that uh, Western Electric is gonna reactivate their tube production. I would absolutely love to work uh, in the vacuum tube manufacturing business but uh, where I am now here in Gdańsk in Poland uh, with uh, no real way to move out from here I can only dream about working in the tube industry okay so that would be it that was a quick one for for my standards, of course. So... That was scary. Telling you the truth, no matter how much it hurts. Saying bye, signing off. 73.